Hello everyone. Today we're doing a woodpecker painting in watercolor. So this isn't going to be a step-by-step -step voiceover. It's just a chat. So if you're looking for a painting tutorial, uh, this isn't going to be that. So this is just going to be a chat while you watch me paint. So you can even just turn down the volume if you just want to look at me paint. Or you can listen and not watch the painting, either one. So, um, yeah, or you could do both. That would be the best, I think, the best choice. So today I'm painting a ladderback woodpecker. And as you can see, he's got stripes down his back that kind of look like a ladder. So this is a bird that is in Illinois. Oh my goodness, what's going on with my hair? <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, it's Chris scary right now. I think I have it up like in one of those messy buns, but um, it's kind of scaring me right now. <laughs> anyway, so um, this is a strictly watercolor painting. I have to say that sometimes I cheat and use a... I don't know that you should call it cheating. Um, it would only be cheating if you were in one of these watercolor associations where you submit a painting and you cannot use any gouache at all. But since this isn't that, um, I can use uh, gouache. But you need to be careful. I'm finding that you can't just use gouache as a crutch for your watercolor painting. So gouache, if you're not familiar, it's a lot more opaque, even though it acts like watercolors. Uh, for example, if you look above the bird on the tree, there's like a blooming uh, area. That is an effect that you get with watercolor paints. And because gouache paint is very opaque and you can't see through it very well, um, you're not going to be able to get that kind of effect. Uh, most of the time. You might be able to if it's very thin and it's more of a transparent color, but it's going to be really hard to get those kind of effects overall. Um, but one of the p things that is nice about the gouache paint, and you can, some people just work would work strictly in gouache or strictly in watercolor, but you can mix the two medias as well, um, is the ability to paint over the top of something uh, and make it a lighter color than what's underneath. And that's impossible basically to do with watercolor paint because the way watercolor paint works is the paper is your base color. So that's the white. And any time you add something on top of that, you can't just wipe it away like you can with oil paint. I mean, it's staining right then and you, you can't. I mean, you might be able to pull a little bit of it out before it dries. Um, or add some water to cause a lighter flow, but it's never going to be pure white again um, after the paints hit it. But with gouache paint, you can actually paint over the top of your paint and get a lighter effect. But there's a cost to that. Um, it's just going to look different. And sometimes the different might be better, but sometimes it might not. It depends on sometimes the effect you're going for. So it's you might have to reach a compromise between those two things. And I'll show you some examples in a minute. I already, I actually had recorded this, but the sound wasn't on, so I'm recording it now. But I put a couple examples of some gouache paint over, some lighter gouache paint over darker watercolors and then um, just regular watercolor paint so you can see some of the nice effects you get with the flow. But um, let me see, let's talk more about this painting. So right now it's Easter week. We had snow a couple days ago. It was crazy. But then the t day after that it was 70 degrees and now it was like mid 70s today and all the trees are in bloom, the magnolias, forsythia red buds. I mean, it's just amazing out and just perfect for Easter. The timing couldn't be better. So yes, it's Easter Sunday this uh, Sunday and um, yeah, so uh, it's beautiful out. I'm hoping to take more pictures of flowers 
this week on all the trees and maybe go to the park and look at the flowers there. Okay, so I don't mind that I'm not doing a lot of busy flowers on this because there's so much busyness going on with the woodpecker. And that would maybe take away from him. It would be a lot. So I'm just going to uh, keep the buds and I'm actually just using a lighter green than this to uh, make the background. I'm not even really changing it up. Okay, here's what I was talking about where I put light over light colors over dark. Actually, the very vibrant blue was pure watercolor and you can just see that vibrancy and then the dollar light colors were the gouache. This I thought had some gouache, but this one for sure does on the breast of the bird. I just was trying to lighten up especially by his face. Now this I don't think has it has one dot on his eye I actually think yeah this one too just one dot of gouache the rest is watercolor and look at all that flow and you can see some areas where I missed actually by his beak that's not gouache but on his eyes is gouache so you can get that same effect with just pure watercolor but you'd have to maybe use either frisket or a very tiny brush and just not too much water on your brush so that you can uh, work do that fine detail work and if you're not familiar with frisket it's kind of like rubber cement that you put on your paper before you do the paint and then wherever you put that you're not going to have it'll protect the paper so you can just after the watercolor paint dries you can pull it off I've got some videos on that under my watercolor playlist you can check it out it's called frisket all right, I'm just adding some more layering of depth and so forth. I mean, this isn't really, this is more just from my memory. I'm not really looking at a reference fold, photo at this point. I'm just, um, you know, trying to add some dimension to the bird. I don't want to go into too much detail. This isn't a hyper-realistic painting, so um, we're just adding some form and some planes to him so he doesn't look so flat. And then, like I said, at the very end I add a touch of the white gouache to his eye. And I, add a, I also noticed I added, because this bird has a few little speckles of light in his uh, that little red crown on top of his head. So I add a few of those with gouache paint as well. And I usually never add just pure white gouache for highlights. I will mix it with either other gouache if I'm working in a, on a gouache painting or I would add a touch of watercolor to the gouache. And you can do that. You can mix the two. But if you mix watercolor if you mix gouache into watercolor, you can't go back. It's no longer watercolor. You've now just got uh, tinted gouache. So you won't be able to get those see-through effects, if that makes any sense. I hope it does. All right, so I think, okay, after that red dries, I come back. I worked on this pretty much for a whole day, maybe a couple days. So even though this is only nine minutes long, this took two days to do. Um, I mean, it's like baking bread. I wasn't like sitting there walk, watching it the entire time, but there was a lot of dry time. All right, just adding a few more details and he's done. And as you can see, I wanted to measure out, uh, leave some space. So I made pencil marks to measure the exact size of the painting I wanted to give me kind of a guideline. And then you can see the gouache on the eye and the red crown. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. More coming soon.